Thank you very much, Madam President. It's with great humility and great pride that I accept this wonderful honor. Now we're classmates, right? That means you have a classmate in the Capitol. <laughs> As Speaker of the House, it is my honor to bring congratulations of the United States Congress to Brown University Class of 2022. Thank you, Madam President. That has a nice ring to it. Thank you, President Christina Paxson and Brown Corporation for your kind words and for your leadership of this historic institution, a pillar of academic excellence for two and a half centuries. Let us salute the wonderful orators, Catlin, Alley, and Michelle. Weren't they wonderful, our student speakers? Ali and Catelyn, you reminded me of a saying that we have uh, when you said let. We have an expression, love means let other versions exist. <laughs> and Michelle, uh, thank you so much. I'm going to try to pause, but I'm standing between this group, their parties, their future, so I'll, I'll compromise there somewhere. Thank you for inspiring us, though, to our class orators with your reflections on the importance of family and friendship and embracing community and finding purpose, not only here at Brown, but beyond. I'm deeply grateful to be honored to receive this honor degree from Brown because of the respect I have for the institution, the university, as a prestigious global leader of education. I myself am grateful to and honored to receive it because I would have loved to participate in the open curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm honored to receive this, uh, this magnificent recognition because of the magnificent company I am with the other honorees. Aren't they just wonderful, all of them? And it's a treat for me to be back in Rhode Island. Officially, I serve in Congress with great members from this state. Some of them are here. Senator Jack Reed is here in regal full regalia. <laughs> Jack uh, Sheldon Whitehouse was here last evening. Congressman Jim Langevin. <laughs> Congre Congressman David Cicilline. <laughs> and of course, we're all proud of your former governor, Gina Raimondo, who is now the Secretary of Commerce. <laughs> I want to also acknowledge another pioneering Brown alumnus, the Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen. Yeah. <laughs> That's officially. Personally, I'm happy to be here because my grandparents met in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. <laughs> yeah. And my close, one of my closest college friends, Martha Bonanno, lived here in Providence. Her brother-in-law, Vinny Bonanno, is here today. Uh, a city she always told me was heaven on earth. You be the judge. <laughs> it's lovely, no question. Graduates, today is your day of triumphs. This ceremony is the culmination of your years of hard work, long hours and late nights at the Rock and the Sili to complete your extensive studies. And don't forget the remarkable bravery to endure the to departure of your beloved, if not befuddling, lamp bear statue, Luna. <laughs> so on this glorious day, take a moment to savor your achievement because you have done something extraordinary. And you did this with the support of your adoring family and friends, strengthened by their love, wisdom, and encouragement. Let's give them a big hand to your family. You can stand up for that. <laughs> for the family. And let us also, while you're standing, salute the excellent role that your, the faculty played in your success.
Today, the class of 2022 joins the ranks of esteemed alumni who have made a difference in our nation and in the world, and some of them are here today. Indeed, Brown is the proud alma mater of aforementioned David Cicilline, who is right now a champion in the fight against gun violence in our country. Someone I have admired for years, Dr. Jim Young Kim, a commanding force for global health. And his son Thomas is graduating today as well. <laughs> and they tell me, I don't know, but they tell me that even the top sun salesman at the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company might be here today. I also want to acknowledge a great Brown supporter. I've been hearing about Brown from decades for him, Stephen Robert, a former chancellor who has been a great friend of mine. <laughs> Steve Martin's family foundation is called the Source of Hope, which you are to me, and I hope that I will be to you today. This moment is exhilarating, and this emotion is compounded by the fact that you're graduating, graduating into a vastly different world than the first time you proceeded through the Van Winkle Gates. As we gather here, war rages in Ukraine. All in all, the heroism and resolve of the people of Ukraine as they courageously defend democracy, not only their own, but ours, against dictatorship. Indeed, our own nation is no stranger to dark and anti-democratic forces. On January 6, 2021, an unprecedented insurrection unleashed an unimaginable violence on the grounds and the halls of the Capitol, a strike at the heart of our democracy, the peaceful transfer of power. And in the months since the insurrection, we've seen further assaults on democracy. Shameful campaigns of voter suppression and election nullification, a Supreme Court poised to erase a woman's right to decide and threaten even more privacy rights, including marriage equality. We can't let that happen. And sadly, in just the last two weeks, two senseless mass shootings, children in their schools, families in their communities. This in addition to countless deadly attacks rooted in racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and white supremacy. And facing adversity not seen in a century with a global pandemic, you have shown extraordinary bravery and resilience. Amid the darkness, it would be easy to descend into apathy or despair, but we can't. We can't, but we know this, hope remains democracy's most powerful weapon against oppression, against cynicism, against hatred. When I had the great privilege of visiting Kyiv a month ago, we saw firsthand the hope in the eyes of the Ukrainian people as they defied the odds against a more powerful and brutal foe. In a similar spirit, here at home, our nation has constantly been improved by our hope for the future. We should have hope because we believe in America. The vision of our founders to put forth an experiment in democracy. The faith and optimism of immigrants to come here and search, and the optimism to come here in search of a better life. The dreams of activists to expand the meaning of freedom. People ask me quite frequently, where is hope? And I say hope is where it always has been sitting there right between faith and charity. Faith, hope, and charity. If you believe, as Honoré Tisch said, in goodness, if you believe in goodness, faith in charity, in goodness, that gives you hope. It should. And in this moment, our nation and the world will need you to carry on this vital tradition. Indeed, as my dear friend and fellow, honorary Brown alumnus, John Lewis. He was so proud of getting that award, as am I. John Lewis wrote, democracy is not a state, it is an act, and each generation must do its part. The poetry... <laughs> so, 
We have hope in America. We have hope in young people. It's your future. You must take responsibility for it. And another thing I say when people ask me about hope, in addition to America and young people, our future, I believe that there is hope in the arts because I believe they are unifying for our country. The poet Shelley once said, the greatest force for moral good is imagination. Imagination to be creative, to create, to put yourself in other people's shoes, to understand something else. But that creativity of the arts, when we experience the arts, we laugh together, we cry together, we're inspired together, we put aside our differences. I do believe the path, the arts, or a path to unity in our country. The arts have been central to our nation and our world from the start. John Adam, Adams wrote to his wife, Abigail, I must study politics and war so that our sons have the liberty to study mathematics, geography, commerce, and agriculture in order for their children to study painting, poetry, music, and architecture. As Adams predicted, see, this was how they expanded opportunity. It was more that people would have the liberty to do. As Adams predicted, each generation of Americans has further weaved the beautiful cultural tapestry of our nation with extraordinary advancements in the arts. For example, this weekend, among our honorees, just yesterday, Shaggy brought everyone together, very unifying, with his singing. Was that not unifying? Did you not put aside your differences? And in today's honoree, Stanley Nelson, he has increased our understanding through storytelling and documentaries. The arts have a way of reaching our hearts and reaching our arts. And poetry has also attracted us to science. I know we have the arts and sciences and the arts and natural sciences awards here. The poet Wordsworth revered the brilliance of Sir Isaac Newton and captured his mission with vivid imagery. He said, a mind forever voyaging through the strange seas of thought alone. And Mr. my colleagues from the Congress, because Mr. Langevin and Mr. Cicilline serve in the House, Senator Reid did before, uh, they can attest that in the science, space, and technology room of the Capitol, on the wall is a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Science, space, and technology, poetry. For I dipped into the future far as human eye could see, saw the vision of the world, and the wonder that would be. Arts and sciences, all important, all are connected, the wonder that would be. Unifying. As you know, the importance of arts and sciences firsthand from the beautiful education you have received at Brown. During your time here, some of you have engaged in cutting edge research, others explored the wonders of the arts, language, and literature, and on campus, you built com communities uh, that transcend our differences from study groups to research teams, the theater troops, to sports. Any sports? I saw some sports student, uh, scholars come through. <laughs> well, many of you will not career, maybe per, pursue careers in arts or science. Your Brown education has opened your eyes, opened your mind, opened your hearts to whatever the future holds. So I urge you to bring this spirit of unity to whatever you do. It's no secret that you graduate in a country deeply divided socially, politically, culturally. And there's even more dangerous factions seek to dispense with democracy altogether. But graduates, you are our hope. When tragedy struck during the time here, you were undaunted. You sacrificed to keep your community safe from the virus. You embraced with open arms students from Afghanistan. You, thrilled, you rallied around classmates new from Ukraine. And in your generation, we see leaders unafraid to take the torch, marching for our lives, demanding action on gun violence, sounding the alarm on climate crisis, 
science, 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 and speaking out against the scourge of injustice, to name a few. On this Memorial Weekend, as we honor those who gave their supreme sacrifice and their families for our democracy, as we pay tribute to those who made that sacrifice, let us remember that one, in one of America's darkest hours, President Lincoln spoke powerfully about the need to bring our country together, to swell the chorus of the Union by the better angels of our nature, he said. And we need you to help summon the better angels of our nature to help heal America's fractured soul. Graduates, I want to just speak to each one of you individually now. <laughs> you all were choosing different paths, but I want to just tell you this. You just don't know what might be down the road. When I was in college, I had zero interest. My friend Martha Dodd Bonanno could attest to that, but she's still with us. Zero interest in running for political office. Actually, I was very shy, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but one thing and another, the opportunity presented itself. Two things. The advice I received is advice that I give to you, each of you individually. When that happens, the best advice is be yourself. You are the authenticity America needs. Be who you are, your values that Madam President spoke about uh, earlier, your values, your why, what is your purpose? Is it climate, is it education, is it healthcare? You know the list of arrays that may be your preeminent passion. Know your, your why, know something about it, be strategic about how you may deal with it, but most of all, that's all up here in the head, most of all, show people what is in your heart, because that is the authenticity of you that nobody can pass out on a piece of paper. Be ready. Know your power. You have great power. You have this magnificent education. You have families and friends who trust in you. And there's nobody like you. You're the only one, the individual, authentic you. So know your power and be ready. Be yourself and be ready. Now, in terms of the women here today. <laughs> with all the respect in the world for everyone who is here today, there is nothing more wholesome for our country, for our politics, for so much of our existence than the fuller participation of women in leadership and in all of that. <laughs> Again, I had no interest in running for office. One thing led to another. Actually, when I did, four of my children were already in college. One was going to be a senior in high school, and I said to her, this is all new to us, but I've been at, mommy, mommy has been asked to run for Congress. And uh, I would rather it be another year because you'd then be in college, but uh, I love my life. I don't care about running for Congress if you want me to stay home. To which my darling daughter, who was 16 at the time, said, Alexandra, she said, uh, Mother, mother, mommy, mother, get a life. <laughs> I said, I had never heard, this. this was 30 years ago, I had never heard the expression before. I told her, you know, I'd be gone from like Monday to Thursday, and then she said, what teenage girl would not want her mother out of the house for three nights a week? <laughs> so I got another life. <laughs> Uh, but that's what I'm just saying to you. Know your why. Be ready. You just don't know what's around the corner for you. You may have a clear path that you've set out. God bless you if you do. But even at that, you will have some of the unforeseen. And just be yourself. Be ready. Know your power. 
the power of you. Strengthened by your time here at Brown, have confidence that you are ready for whatever opportunities present themselves. Never be afraid to take the leap of faith, particularly when it is unexpected, and mostly it'll be hard. Graduates, you are among the, f the very, very fortunate few to be blessed with a Brown education. Once beyond these gates, the leaders who once sat where you sit now have gone on to groundbreaking, generation-defining things. And with your brilliance, your passion, and your vision, so will you. Let me just tell you what I see here. I see dazzling brilliance, beautiful diversity. I see the future, and it is you. So class of two... So class of 2022, go forward with courage to build unity and hold on to your hope. And always remember, you have a classmate in the capital of the United States. <laughs> on behalf of the United States Congress, for today, congratulations. For tomorrow, good luck, and forever, ever true to Brown. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you so much.